Chicago, the destination of millions of travelers, the heart of America, the scene of the greatest show on earth. It's the focal point of a nation. From all parts of the continent, crowds pour in seeking new experience, new thrills, new knowledge. This is America. America on parade. Through many entrances, eager crowds make their way toward the avenue of flags, where flying banners represent every nation. Special delegations march down this impressive avenue. The Gordon Highlanders from Canada are here in all their glory. The world's biggest thermometer typifies the immensity and boldness of design of a century of progress. Joining the crowd in festive spirit, we go on toward the streets of Paris. The exterior represents a French steamship. The Latin Quarter of Paris is reproduced within. There's a big blimp flying along. Let's see how a fair looks from its cabin. Covering 22 long city blocks, the fair occupies all the space between Lake Michigan and Chicago's Outer Drive. A great island and the lagoon that separates it, even the sweeping bridges between, all carry elaborate exhibits, splendid restaurants, and entertainment features. Here, spread beneath us, is a city of tomorrow. The old and the new in transportation are housed in the travel and transport building. It is called the building that breathes. Outside the building, early steam locomotives are in sharp contrast to modern streamlined trains. The Spanish village represents a colorful bit of old Madrid. Daring aerialists real visiting crowd. General Motors is represented with a large building of modern design. The Chrysler exhibit is housed in a spectacular structure. Crowds are attracted by the Midget Village, populated by more than a hundred merry-making Lilliputians. These folks may be small, but they certainly know how to get around. Long and the short of it. Hi, young fella. Transportation within a century of progress is rapid and inexpensive. Open air buses in a never ending stream cover the fairground. Along the midway, we come to the Lost River. Here, huge prehistoric monsters seem to live and breathe. How would you like to meet this fellow on his way to lunch? And now for a real thrill. A trip on the skyline. The supporting towers rise 628 feet in the air. The highest man-made structure west of the Atlantic coast. Elevators carry passengers to the 210-foot level, where boat-like cars wait to carry them across the 1,850 feet between the towers. A magnificent panorama of the fair unfolds as the cars move along suspended from strong steel cables. The impressive extent of a century of progress is more than ever apparent from this vantage point. Here's the Tunisian village. Gentlemen, this is the Tunisian village. As you see the name above the doorway, 
representing Northern Africa, the Great Sahara Desert. Here is where you will see genuine Bedouin as they live on the desert. You will see the Arabian tumblers, gun spinners, sword fighters, and the dancing girls of Tunis, featuring Asia, who is conceded by the Bay of Tunis to be the greatest of all dancers. If she's good enough by the Bay of Tunis, she must be good enough for you. Tickets over here, 25 cents. Let's go, everybody. Come on, everybody. The spell of the Sahara Desert is brought to Chicago by these nomadic tribesmen who intersperse their new learned Western games with feats of skill and strength. of a century, a pageant drama depicts the development of transportation through a hundred years of American history. The century of progress is thrilling with its endless new sights and new sounds, but it takes its toll in energy toward the end of the day. You heard about hot dogs at the fair. Well, here they are. At night, the century of progress becomes a veritable fairyland of light and color. light the grounds in the sky above. As nightfall closes the marvels of the day with the enchantment of night, the fair takes on the appearance of a modern Baghdad. On the Ford building alone, more lighting is used than illuminated the entire World's Fair of 1893. In this galaxy of huge structures and advanced ideas, the Ford Exposition stands out in bold relief. The Ford building is nearly a thousand feet long, the tower as high as a ten-story building. The Ford Exposition covers an 11-acre track along the shores of Lake Michigan. It is surrounded by landscape gardens, from which the tall white walls of the building rise in striking contrast. It can be seen from almost any point in the fairground. Inside the gigantic rotunda, more than 60 antique vehicles brought from Henry Ford's own priceless collection at Dearborn tell the story of man's conquest for faster and more comfortable travel. An ancient chariot, the ox cart, the covered wagon, and early automobiles of many makes are there.
The outer wall bears a series of gigantic photographic murals, 20 feet in height and 600 feet in length, depicting scenes from the Ford Rouge plant in Dearborn. Here are Edsel Ford and Henry Ford, two of the most interested visitors at the Ford Exposition. of a huge open court, a revolving globe map, 20 feet in diameter, shows on its surface the vast extent of the Ford industrial world. Henry Ford's conception of industry includes the basic operations of mine, farm, and forest. Diorama or sculpture pictures depict the basic elements used in the Ford B8. Much of the Ford exposition is built about the methods of fabricating these basic elements and materials into finished Ford parts. The central theme of the exposition is, out of the earth comes the Ford car. This fact is stressed again and again throughout the exposition. More than 5,000 firms supply material for the building of the Ford V8. 21 of the largest of these have displays in the Ford building. The industrial wing, which houses the exhibits, together with many others prepared by the Ford Motor Company, is larger than two football fields laid end to end. The building up speedometers for the Ford V8 is shown. Exacting tests must be passed by each speedometer before it is accepted. Ford speedometers tell the truth. They are born honest. Here, automatic machines cut gears for Ford at great accuracy. Even the gaskets for the Ford V8 must be carefully made to pass exacting tests for lasting qualities. Intricate looms weave upholstery for the Ford V8. Carburetors must satisfy expert testers. Here, precision plays a part in making the Ford V8 one of the fastest, liveliest, and most economical cars. A revolving display of parts for the Ford V8, many of which are never seen by the owner, form an interesting exhibit. Henry Ford has a keen interest in the practical education of youth. At the exposition, pupils from his trade school at Dearborn show how they learn to perform a useful part in the modern world of work and play. During a four-year course, trade school pupils alternate between classroom and shop. This gigantic watch shows how automobile clocks operate. Here we see what good shock absorbers mean to riding comfort. A miniature mill reproduces the process of rolling steel ingots into strips. Cushion springs play an important part in riding ease. Special machines produce them for Ford V8s at a high rate of speed.
composition rollers bearing the imprint of mahogany grain impart a lasting finish to Ford V8 instrument panels. The safety of steel is combined with the beauty of wood. The sturdy, simple construction of the Ford car is shown by the dissected chassis, while a model motor made entirely of glass shows the inner workings of the Ford V8 engine. Sturdy Ford front axles offer resistance to a powerful twisting machine, but under extreme stress, then without braking. It is constant testing that ensures more quality. Here is a step in the preparation of rubber used in the making of tires, so vital to automobile operation. A battery of special welding machines forms the welded steel Ford wheel. So sturdy and strong is this Ford wheel that when suspended at the hub, 14 Ford cars can be hung from its rim. At the fair, three Fords are suspended from one wheel, but 11 more could have been added had space permitted. No wonder Ford owners feel safe. Bodies for the Ford V8 are made entirely of steel, welded together with special equipment developed to join the parts in unions, which are stronger than the material itself. Amid a shower of sparks, these three panels of the Ford V8 body are welded as hundreds of spectators look on. In another exhibit, safety glass for Ford windshields is made. Two layers of glass with the center transparent binding sheet are pressed together and baked under high temperatures to form a single sheet of safety glass. The edges are now sealed with a special waterproof preparation to prevent separation or discoloration. Steel ingots are rolled into slender bars between hard metal rollers. These bars are cut into lengths and after reheating are automatically formed to shape to become drag links, an important part of dependable Ford steering gear. Crowd watching the pouring of white hot liquid metal for casting processes. An electric furnace heats the metal to a temperature of more than 2700 degrees and it is poured off into ladles and later into molds. Flying shuttles weaving upholstery cloth never fail to prove fascinating. From thin sheets of brass rolled in special mills at the exposition, a marvelously intricate machine forms Ford V8 radiator tubing. This machine is one of hundreds, demonstrating the speed and absolute control of modern industrial devices. The upholstery woven in another part of the exposition is cut into shape and fed through a gigantic machine capable of producing seats and backs for 600 sedans an hour. This machine, called a multipleter, is contrasted with the old-fashioned handwork. Skill designers model and play motor cars of tomorrow. A spacious balcony at the Ford building offers cool shade with an excellent view of Lake Michigan and the fair. The Ford V8 motor is a beautiful piece of machinery. In mechanics, beauty means simplicity. Here, skilled workers repeatedly disassemble and assemble a standard Ford motor to demonstrate its qualities of simplicity and accessibility. The average time required for them to completely assemble the V8 motor is less than 10 minutes. During this demonstration, many of the exclusive features of Ford V8 design become apparent. 
spectators gain a better understanding of its remarkable performance, its records of long service. Simplicity of Ford V8 design is strikingly demonstrated by the fact that a Ford V8 motor can be and is assembled before your very eyes in less than 10 minutes. Aluminum cylinder heads are standard equipment on the 1934 Ford V8 passenger car engine. The story of aluminum too is told at the exposition. The molten metal is poured into a mold to emerge in the form of a V8 cylinder head. An escalator provides an easy approach to the balcony in the Ford Exposition building. Hexagon headed bolts of uniform size and accuracy are produced from cold steel by a battery of automatic machines working with great rapidity. Even spark plug insulators for the Ford V8 are severely tested. If they can be lifted from a packing of dry ice more than 100 degrees below zero and suddenly thrust into a hot flame without breaking, they prove their ability to withstand punishment in actual use. Utilization of byproducts helps in quality manufacture. A Ford V8 contains more than 15,000 separate parts. Each of these, large and small, is displayed in this interesting exhibit. Intricate machines weave spider-like wiring systems. Wires like these will connect the lights, self-starter, generator, storage battery, and horns. The Ford Exposition includes an air-conditioned theater where a motion picture with special symphonic music tells the fascinating story of the Ford Rouge plant. Nearby, the latest Ford and Lincoln models are on display. The heart of the Ford Exposition is the humble shop where 40 years ago, Henry Ford, then a young unknown inventor, worked and planned and dreamed high dreams. There he built his first automobile. There too, he conceived the theories of low cost quantity production, which have made his industrial organization the largest in the world under the control of one man. The vast improvement in machine shop equipment through the past century is vividly depicted by an early machine shop. In contrast is modern equipment, which tests Ford parts with an accuracy of expressed in millionths of an inch. With one foot on the land and one in industry, America is safe, says Henry Ford. At his exposition, an industrialized barn shows how soybeans grown on the farm may be processed for industrial purposes. An extensive display of early traction engines stands in front of the Ford barn. The barn contains machinery which converts soybeans into the parts used in Ford cars. Mr. Ford has long predicted a closer and mutually profitable union between farm and industry. This Ford part was made from soybeans processed in the industrialized barn. Many visitors to the Ford Exposition make a circuit of the roads of the world. Ford cars are placed at the disposal of guests for a trip around the Oval, which contains sections of many famous roads of the world. Henry Ford has said that the auto made roads, and roads make commerce and civilization. In the short space of a comfortable four minute ride, these visitors are carried back through a period of 4,000 years to roads which knew the tread of the Roman legions, the yellow hordes of Genghis Khan, the moccasin feet of Daniel Boone, and his Indian friends. 
They see the bleaching bones of men and beasts as they rot beneath the fierce rays of the sun, beating down upon the great slave route across Africa. Here also are sections of roads from Germany, Belgium, Canada, Southern Africa, Asia, England, and many of the more modern types built in America today. Military roads, roads built exclusively for royalty, roads for slaves, all are there in this significant exhibit. Now, once more nightfall overtakes us. We end our day at the Ford Exposition by joining the throngs who sit at twilight in the amphitheater where the Detroit Symphony plays daily. a memorable day, this one at the Ford Exposition. Here we have caught an echo of the hum of machinery and the throb of busy activity from the greatest of all industrial plants. Here, we have been able to sense something of its high purpose and its vast significance. The Ford Exposition is at once the fulfillment of a promise and the realization of a dream. It is an indication of the future, a reassuring prophecy of another century of progress. wonderful wedding gift. Wish I could find time to drive out there, too. <laughs> Look, John. They're back to their first love. Oh, look, Bob. I can move over without getting all tangled up. Sure, that's the new gear shift lever. But here's what interests me. Nice, wide seat. Clear vision. Um, now, John, you're not buying a car for yourself, you know. <laughs> Pardon my enthusiasm, Mother, but do you remember our bridal coach? Just two horsepower, wasn't it? And that nosy old coachman. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess that settles it. Can you deliver this car in time for the wedding Saturday noon? It will be there, Mr. Allen. Dad, you're precious. A wonderful wedding gift and a grand trip to the San Diego Fair. I'm the happiest person in the world. A pretty good test for a car. Massachusetts to Southern California. Not a test. An opportunity to prove everything I've told you. Yeah, I'm crazy about it. What a lucky break for me. Coast to coast, a trip to the San Diego Fair, and a couple of honeymooners.
you're going? To the San Diego Fair. Well, never mind that, sister. Fetch your license. <laughs> Honeymooners, eh? <laughs> well, I guess you two are up in the clouds. Why don't you go up there and take a look? At least you'll be able to see where you're going. a demonstration of good brakes. The new positive action brakes on all Ford V8s give you just what you need when you need it most. More than 14,000 feet above sea level. And watch me climbing. Here's a steep one, and I'll take it in high. They all look alike to me. See that nasty turn? Easy for me. With a short turning radius and transverse springs, I can turn on a dime and have a nickel left over. Some climb, and I'm not even breathing hard. Yes, they've seen Pike's Peak, and by now they should be right in the middle of Zion National Park. It's called one of the wonders of America. And can't you just see them, simply bringing in the beauties of nature?
Well, folks, again, those two seem to be missing all this marvelous scenery. But there's one big pleasure they can't miss. That's the center poise ride of these new Ford V8s, combining comfort with stability and safety. What would you do about that? I've got it. I'll visit the San Diego Fair alone. Then I'll come back later to pick up those two lovebirds. They'll still be sitting there. So watch my speed. Caballeros, we give you the fiesta at San Diego. California's traditional hospitality, handed down for generations from the gracious days of the Spanish dons, is beckoning millions of guests to San Diego's California Pacific International Exposition. From every part of the Americas, North, South, and Central, they come. And like the hostess of old, San Diego has outdone herself to provide gaiety, cultural adventures, fine music, beautiful architecture, modern industrial displays, and plenty of joyous, carefree fun. The lovely architecture of 16th century Spain rears its slender white spires and delicate traceries in sharp relief against summer skies. The dark-eyed flower girl who bewitches us into buying an exotic tropical bloom for our buttonhole says, Muchos gracias, senor. And her merry smile costs us nothing. Balboa Park, scene of the exposition, boasts a thousand graceful trees, and set like a white gem in a deep green mounting, is one of the largest of the fair exhibits. In this building, a brief cross-section of the Ford plant at Dearborn tells the story of raw materials and their progress from earth to automobile. Trained lecturers explain each exhibit, telling, for instance, 
how soybeans are processed to make parts for Ford cars. Henry Ford, you know, believes that a great deal of the automobile of the future will be grown on the farms of America. Industry has its fireworks too, and brilliant displays mark the path of the electric arc welding machine, a device that contributes strength and safety to modern automobiles. The heart of any car is its engine. So one exhibit shows this miracle of engineering. Two mechanics prove that it takes only a few minutes to assemble and take down the famous V8 engine. Boys representing the Henry Ford Trade School have an interesting exhibit at San Diego. Remember the stories about medieval torture chambers that made your blood run cold? On the rack, many parts are subjected in a few hours to the same punishing wear and strain they undergo in months of hard driving. Yes, sir. Parts for a modern automobile have to be able to take it and come up with a bounce like these valve seat inserts. Oh, there's one that didn't quite make it. Even Ford's safety glass must prove its worth when a falling steel ball strikes it with a crushing blow that would demolish ordinary plate glass. At Ford plants, there's many a penny saved in a big byproducts department utilizing everything. They're even trying to use the whoosh you hear as the Fords go by. A marvelous working model at the fair shows how this byproducts department functions. Strolling around this fair certainly takes it out of you, doesn't it? Let's see, can't we find some place to rest? Ah, oh, yes, here's one. And we're on the beautiful Ford verandas overlooking San Diego and the blue waters of the bay. Isn't this perfect? Hello, here's a young Balboa. He got his fare ticket on condition that he'd keep an eye on his young brother Tommy. Hello, will you look at that? Now who would ever have thought of using this beautiful V8 fountain in the Ford building patio for a rendezvous with an ice cream cone? Well, a lot of folks agree with this youngster and the Ford patio is one of the most popular places for relaxation on the fairgrounds. There is music, grateful shade, and inviting benches. Outside in the great Ford Bowl, symphony orchestras, choirs, and choruses give series of concerts, and artists present recitals daily on the new electronic organ. Let's take a ride around the Ford roads of the Pacific just outside the building. Hop into a 1935 car, and we're off. Here's the old plank road from California across the desert to Yuma, Arizona. Then Japan's Tokaido, which figures in that country's fable and song almost as importantly as Fujiyama, the sacred mountain. Panama's Gold Road comes next, literally paved with the bones of men and beasts who broke its weary miles through steaming jungles. The old Spanish trail is so old that history fails to record its actual beginning. We haven't time to see all the roads, but they're not the half of it. What's that hubbub? My gracious, it's the midway, and what a midway! What a riot of color and noise. There's everything here that you've ever seen, and some more that you haven't. Come on along to the midway. Never mind how old you are. You'll be 10 years younger by the time we get through. Well, 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 here's our old friend Tommy with the ice cream cone and he still has to put in a few more licks. No wonder these youngsters try to make everything at the fair last as long as possible. There's never been anything just like it before and may never be again, for it combines a nostalgic old world charm and color with the newest in this hustling modern world of ours. Here is a vacation opportunity such as you may never find again. Drive through the national parks and scenic wonders of the far west to this sparkling, colorful fiesta at San Diego, an exposition that is a dedication to California's yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and a toast to the continuation of an American epic on the Pacific coast, 
that will be written large in the history of the nation as the years march on.